one and all, welcome to Let's Discuss Ruby. We have got Volume 7, Episode 1. I am the Max of You Trades, and I have no idea where I'm going with this. As With me, as always, is... The Britman, known as your only mate, That's or true. Nonsense Man. He is Nonsense Man. All right, I botched the hell out of that intro, but you know what? We're going to keep it going anyway, because we've got Ruby to talk about, and not a lot of time to talk about it. Guess what's back? Back again. Us? I meant Ruby, but okay. That works too. <laughs> I was kind of confused. It's like, uh, a couple things. Uh, which one are you going with? <laughs> uh, well, we've already did our, our pre-ramble in the last video, so I guess we can just jump straight into the episode then? Let's do it. Okay, so basically here's how things go. We start things off, it's all pretty simple. We see the moon, it's still destroyed. What's up with that? Why you gotta be like that? I know the yeah. god the gods blew it up, but still. Yeah. I, I find it interesting that no one's ever in the series just said, ever wonder why the moon is like that? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's like uh we know that humanity like kind of evolved and re became a thing. Yeah, I, I that. guess it's just always been the way that it is. Why bother asking questions? It, it, it just seemed like the norm yeah. for them. Anyway, we basically pick up exactly where the last volume ended. Uh, with billions of ships, billions of ships, and everyone's like, "This is concerning." Yeah, and it is. Something is clearly wrong with Atlas, other than you know the systematic racism that they're constantly known for. Uh, but we'll get to that. <laughs> and it being just filled with uh, snobby douchebags. Yeah, it's also basically just a military state in general. Yeah. Why? Well, yes, yeah, indeed. See, the thing about, and so, so, so Weiss is like, hmm, now don't get me wrong, this place has always sucked, but this seems especially sucky. Yeah. And she's worried that she'll probably end up getting, you know, thrown back to her dad, which would be Which, a, nobody wants that. Nobody wants that, and I don't think any member, I don't think anybody inside that ship would be willing to let that happen, even the ones that don't know her as well. Like, I think even Maria would smack, like, Jacques in the back of the head with her cane if that came to that. I want that now. <laughs> Just tonk. <laughs> but anyway, Weiss is reassured, and she decides, I'm gonna call Winter. Now there's a now there's a lady who could probably make some magic happen, but she never yeah. picks up. It's like, don't screen her cool as Winter. Does this mean that Winter is evil? Does it? Who knows? Well, I guess this I... is meant to be the volume of, like, who do we trust? We trust Weiss. Well, we trust everyone on, like, Team Ruby and, like, in that general group. Yeah. I, I feel I feel it's unlikely that anybody inside that ship at that moment is going to be a turncoat. Anyway, we see Ironwood again, and his, his stubble of despair has become a beard of depression. Yep. So and that's something. He also still has a band-aid over his eyebrow, which means either That's he... not a band-aid. It's not. Is no, that... they confirmed that that's like a chip in his head. Oh. I was always confused by that. It was like, okay, dude, I think whatever's there is healed by now. <laughs> Admittedly, I was too, but then eventually someone confirmed, like, yeah, it's not like a band-aid or anything. But that's I mean, just... it, 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 it does kind of look like one. Yeah, it does. And that's what threw me off. Yeah. And Ruby's all like, man, that dude looks tired. And Crow's all like, nah, man, he looks scurred. Mm. He's a paranoid man with a paranoid plan. As robot monsters are walking about the streets, that's disturbing. Yeah. Children throwing rocks! As they do. I think my favorite thing about those two children that threw the rock at the, at the robot is that they are literally the exact same model. <laughs> Just different colors. Oh god, they are. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, one, they're they're wearing different outfits, but for the most part, that's the exact same head and hair. It's just different yeah. colors. <laughs> it's the exact same haircut. Uh, I, 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 admittedly, I wouldn't have noticed that if you didn't say it. I know, I know, I know. But um, it's it's just funny to me. I mean, we, we've come a long, long way from the silhouette background characters and everything, but you know, you still gotta you still gotta yeah. keep keep costs low where you can. Admittedly, I do kind of miss the shadow people in a way. I do, but let's be real. They were always a really weird, jarring thing. Yeah. And, but... it, always, and it always gave away which characters were going to become important. 
Mm. Like, you remember back in Volume 1, when, during, like, the auditorium scene, where basically the only people, <laughs> the only people there are, like, there's, like, about a bazillion shadow people, but there's also, like, Ruby and, like, John is just, like, in the corner <laughs> before we really knew who he was. Yeah. That, that just made me laugh. Anyway, so winter ain't picking up, and everyone's a little on edge, but they decide we should probably yeah. abandon the well, ever-loving uh, hell out of this place. Well, but before that, Blake saw, hey, Weiss, take a look at this. It's your sister. And she looks out the window, and boom, there's winter on a giant TV. Yeah, being evil, saying, probably. Saying, hey, listen to what the Atlas military tell you. Yeah, we're the military. We're not evil, probably. And then Maria gets tired of the people talking on the radio. It's like, take the hint. <laughs> it's like, you are in yeah. an unrestricted area. Keep going. You turn it back. It's like, mm. no. Maria have... has, like, so many great lines like that. She's a pretty just... Yeah, she's a great character. Yeah, but I also think, like, her voice actor must just be having so much fun in this role. I think so. It's like, we didn't answer you the first three times. What makes you think this time's going to be any different, lady? <laughs> but anyway, she knows a guy. And they go off to find this guy, but it's a bit of a walk, so they have to walk through the slums. And them slums is full of all sorts of robots, and Faunus not being treated well, because that's just how it'd be. Ugh. Although I am left wondering how... I mean, I, I don't know, maybe they lived there before they shoved the city into the sky? I don't really know how that works. Although... Although, we should also point out we have these, like, posters of someone. Yeah. It says, Hill is here. Yeah, also, hang on. Here we go. Hold up. Uh, there's also a dude looking at some sort of holographic newspaper on a wall, and I didn't actually look at it before. Okay, well, like, first things first, there's one that says, Missing journalist found slain. That's dark and topical to modern Ooh. events. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't think I actually read these, so mainly. <laughs> yeah, and then, okay, we've got election imminent. There's that lady again who's on the posters. And it says, like, Mantle Hometown Hero versus Atlassian Tycoon. So I get... Oh, she's taking on Jacques. Or, or at least somewhat adjacent to him. Hmm. But I don't know what the election is. I always assumed that the military ran Atlas. So I, I kind of figured that it was Ironwood who was basically in charge. Oh, there's a little something uh, we'll have to talk about related to that. Yeah, I guess so. There's also, we're still talking about the dust embargo, the outer wall damaged. Hey, community events. Hmm. We're having a potluck. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, there's a Faunus with a banjo. And there's some graffiti saying, show your teeth. Which means shark Faunus. Also, if you look at the group, Blake like, is the only one who really looks at it. Well, yeah, I mean, she probably is responsible for some of it. Not an atlas, but I'm sure she graffitied at least once in her life. Maybe, who knows? Who knows? She was a delinquent. Anyway, mm. so then a robot. She's changed now. Yeah, it's true, it's true. And so they're keep walking, and a little robot's all like, hey, look at that Yang over there. I'm gonna stare at her. And Yang's all like, get away, you creepy pervert robot. And then it's like, I'm gonna snap a picture. And then kicked it. And then even you'd think the kicking of the robot would be enough, but then it gets hit by a car. And that's hilarious. <laughs> it is. Especially Yang's immediate reaction. One of, whoop, didn't see that coming. <laughs> and, perfect timing, though. And then the, the stance she makes when, we were talking about that a little earlier off camera, but the stance she makes when everyone's looking at her after the robot gets destroyed. Yeah. It's, uh, it, maybe it's, we should keep going with, like, a hand at the back of my head. It's, like... it's, it's painfully cute. I'm just going to throw it out there. That's adorable. Yeah. And everyone's all like, uh, you crazy lady. You crazy lady, and, you need to stop kicking robots. And uh, shout out to various people on Twitter who pointed this out. Hmm. In that scene, it's only visible for like a split second. You will absolutely miss this on your first watch. Mm -hmm. But it's As, like when yeah, everyone turns yeah, yeah. around and starts walking, uh, Blake's like smiling and does like a little eye roll. It's just like classic Yang. Always kicking robots into cars. <laughs> <laughs> this is a common occurrence. And then we've got uh, faunus workers. Yeah, faunus workers in the mine. They don't have proper showers, I guess. Ugh. Racism. 
Speaking of which... But, the interesting thing... Hang on, before we get to that, though. Okay. Blake is willing to be significantly more tolerant of the thing. It's like, okay, yeah, this is obviously a thing, and I'm not a fan of it, but also we've got, like, other things to think about right now. Yeah, we, well, we, I mean, they're gonna get the lamp to... I wouldn't, like, think... Oh, at least, like, the right person, I guess. Yeah, whoever, man. Anyway, so a drunk hipster emerges from the shadows to be racist. And hey! Atlas is the greatest kingdom ever! You stop that. You stop Sorry. that, you racist man. And Ruby's about to just straight up murder him, except not really, but I think it would be funny. And Blake's all like, nah. That would be hilarious. Yeah, but then Blake's all like, nah, 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 don't, don't, don't be pulling that noise. That ain't worth it. And even, you know, Yang's obviously mad about it, too. And she, like, holds herself back when Blake tells Ruby to, like, stop. Yeah, but then he gets, like, overtly racist about the whole dang thing. And the the real best girl decides, nah, ain't having none of that, and Weiss freaking yeets the hipster into a dumpster with her glyphs, which is amazing. That is amazing. Because Weiss has developed and grown as a character so dang much that she is... <laughs> I don't know, I might splice in the video, but I have, like... You know what, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. But basically, when I first saw that... Uh... <laughs> Whenever Y sees somebody being racist within her proximity, not on my watch. Not on my watch. That's what I think of, and it's hilarious, and I love it. She is not going to stand for it ever again. Yeah. It's like it was worth it. Good on you, Weiss. Yeah, she is the best. And then drunk beanie man's all like, "Hey, you're important," and then he falls over deaded, drunk deaded. <laughs> as winter continues to be ambiguously malicious and then we as, see and then we see and then we see everyone's favorite new background character teddy girl with robot arm who will totally be important in like the next 5 episodes definitely yeah <laughs> but she does a happy little and if she not, does a happy little skip walk when she leaves it's adorable yeah and if she is not a major character, the fan base will rage like you would not believe. Yeah, well, you never know, man. I mean, Velvet became a character because of the reasons like that. Okay, yeah, sure. I joke about it, but... <laughs> yeah, you I joke, happened. but this has happened before. <laughs> and Sienna Khan, like, got into the Adam show because she was, like, because so people, yeah, Yeah, because point. people were mad that she didn't get more screen time, so they, they threw her in there. So... This sort of thing has happened before. It could very well happen again. The only way, the only time it didn't happen is when uh, they didn't give the pilot his own spinoff show because he's dead. Yeah. What should be a prequel? <laughs> you never know, man. Anyway, so we yeah. meet Geppetto. Pietro. Geppetto. I know. I'm not gonna lie, I was expecting you to go, whatever. No, it's Geppetto. And he doesn't recognize Maria for some reason. I'm guessing he's somewhat senile. Probably, yeah. But he eventually remembers. Uh, and I guess he's the one who gave her her eyeballs. So that's cool. Yeah. Also, he has a horrifying spider wheelchair. That thing is both horrifying but also awesome. No, it's really awesome because um, you can also tell just by looking at it, the, the way it's designed means it can, it can deal with inclines, which is obviously one of the biggest problems for people in wheelchairs. Yeah. So it, it makes a lot of sense that, you know, an advanced wheelchair would be able to do that, other than maybe just straight up hovering. But this thing could probably also climb moderately steep cliffs, which would be really cool. That would be, actually. Also, I can imagine not easy or fun to animate. Yeah, but then again, what is fun and easy to animate? Um, nothing, but that's what makes it worthwhile. Very true. Anyway, this dude... This dude here, this Geppetto man, Pietro, okay, he is, he is one smart fella, and boy howdy, does the place he live in kind of look, kind of be a pile of crap. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, he likes living there because he gets to help people out. Yeah, because he's a good person. Also, yeah. he's, he's voiced by the same guy who voiced Lee Everett in the first Walking Dead Telltale season, and as we were talking about before, he has a beautiful man voice. Yes, he does. <laughs> Rooster Teeth, if you ever want to make an audiobook of After the Fall and Before the Dawn... Just hire him! Hire him, please. Like, it, it, it sure, maybe the, the character being the narrator makes no sense, but the voice yes. works. The voice it's works. gorgeous voice! Anyway, so we get an introduction. He's basically the head honcho of robotics and all of Atlas. 
and he's working on dancing shoes. Nora wants which gets Nora yeah, wants the shoes. Yeah. But Yang says no time for shoes. And Nora gets sad. <laughs> so obviously they're having oh, wait, some problems. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah, so they're having problems and like, hey, you mind telling us what the actual hell's going on? And basically, Pietro's all like, well, basically, espionage, yo. Bad, bad hojo mojo. Well, first he hangs up a death flag and then says that because of the cough. Oh, right, yeah, he's definitely going to die by the end of the season. Mm. If not through the illness that he very clearly demonstrates through the, through the coughing, because here's the thing. Because of the way that, you know, writing, I mean, writing and voice acting works, a character never deliberately coughs unless it's important. Okay, yeah, true. I was about to say, I mean, it, it could just be a cough. Yeah, it could be, but when have you ever in your entire life watched anything and had a character show some visual signs of illness and have it not come up later? Never. Because, so. he, because the way the voice acting works and the way, you know, you know, shows work is, yeah, in real life, you have, you have people like us that are talking and we, you know, you have your ums and your ahs and you stammer over your words and stuff like that. Yeah. Whereas, like, it, whereas in shows like this, that's cut out entirely so that you're able to give, you know, crisp, concise dialogue. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the amount of times, like, uh, in my very long uh, playthrough of a video game, I was going, <laughs> exactly. And you never see, you only ever see that in like bloopers. You never see a character in the middle of an incredibly dramatic moment get briefly, actually, get briefly tongue tied and have to start over. Actually, there is one video game where that happens. Okay, it's very, very rare. I know, but the point I'm trying, the, po the, the point I'm trying to say is, when Ruby confronts Cinder and they're having their epic clash. Cinder isn't going to go into her evil monologue, get tongue-tied, go... Okay, <clears throat> sorry, hang on, let me start over. <laughs> That's not going to happen, is basically what I'm getting at. So, in stuff like this, a cough is never just a cough. Unfortunately. Anyway, so yeah. I like this guy already. Yeah, I do like this guy, so it sucks that he's probably going to die horribly. Anyway, so he figures, well, somebody brought down the shields, and we're looking like idiots, so we're now we're all paranoid, and man, it either means somebody was insanely talented, or a spy, hey. possibly both. I just noticed a little something in the background. With that? Uh, days since last nonsense, but he ran out of room on the small blackboard, so it's kind of like, dripping down when it says nonsense. Hang on. Zero. Hang on a second. I don't think I saw that. It's probably during one of those establishing panning shots. Hold yeah. the phone. I demand to know what the heck you talking about. Oh wait, there it is. <laughs> he did run out, so he just d he did did that exact thing that people do. It's like I'll just it is, it's on a curve. That's funny. <clears throat> I like yeah. that. Also, damn, Oscar is short. Well, I mean, he is the youngest of the group. I know, but he's shorter than Nora. Nora is tiny. Yeah. Actually, here's a question. Who's taller, Oscar or Neo? Well, they haven't been in the same shot yet, so it's going to be a bit before we can answer that. I'm going to look it up. Man, oh, yeah, that's true. That's, they probably have official listings. Also, yeah, you, man... You keep it, talking, I'll look this up. Okay. But especially when he's standing next to Jean, who... I don't know if Jean is tall or not, but he's definitely the tallest dude in the room, at least. Yeah, I'm, I, if I remember right, he is. Anyway, so... I think he was taller than Pura. It's possible. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So Weiss is all like, hey, you hear anything about Winter? And he's all like, man, I don't know, man. I don't know nothing. But wait, why are you talking about Winter? Oh, that's because you be Weiss. And then Yang is all like, whoa, what up you going on with that? And then he's all like, look, looking at a robot arm. He's like, hey, you, hey. Pa you painted the arm. I remember making that. I built that wait arm. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's all this but shenaniganery? And then Ruby's You're the protagonists! Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Although, I gotta be 100% honest. Oh, no. Like, in, like, a Ruby Abridged series, in that scene... Oh, that's... Yeah, like, yeah. You're the main characters! How would you know? But, um, <laughs> in all honesty, the the scene of him just going, You're Team Ruby! And then them being freaked out, like, someone knows who we are? That is... I don't know why, but that, that, that scene makes me both happy... And makes me laugh at the same time. It's just nice I mean, seeing I, them recognized yeah. for any reason at all. We'll get into why. Um, 
But uh, she's like, yeah, 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 I know who Team Ruby is. My daughter says a whole lot about you. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, wonder what that means. <laughs> yeah, but... Oh, I wonder who his daughter is. Yes. And anyway, Ruby's confused by that. But then monsters attack, and then a fight scene ensues. And wouldn't you know it, it's a pretty good fight scene. Oh, yeah, and it's also the fight scene that was shown at RTX. Although it was an unfinished version that wasn't nearly as uh, refined or pretty looking. This The ver the, fi the finished version is obviously better. Yeah. Should we, should I emit a little something? Yeah, sure. Uh, so... Uh, Max was not able to actually make it to the panel. I was not. Unfortunately, I did not. Because, because I was just, I was just late in, in planes and blah blah blah. I wasn't able to be there and I was sad. Yeah. However, uh, oh, I felt a little bad about this because they always say these things like, please don't record it. Mm hmm. I, I did on my phone. He did. And then we watched it th together later in my hotel room. But I deleted it soon after. I did not post it online. And he never... Sh I don't think he showed it to anybody else either. No, so. I did not. I, ev I even had friends who were like, Oh, can you show me it? And I was like, can't do it. Can't do it. No, nope, it's not happening. Can't, sorry, can't risk, can't risk that biscuit. So, obviously, nope. I, I deeply appreciated that. And, I mean... Yeah. I, I paid for everything. I had the full pass. I sh should have and could have been able to go to that panel. I was just too late. So, technically, I feel like no wrongdoing was had. Oh, forgot to mute that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even hear what was happening. But... Yeah, no, but on the video, there might be something that sounds a lot like a gunshot going off. Yeah, that was, that was, that was Ruby. <laughs> oh, you live in America, so that's like, how common? Uh, depressingly. Anyway, so highlights from this wicked sweet fight. Everybody yeah, gets to, every, everybody everybody gets to do at least one cool thing. Yeah, which is awesome, and I especially love what Crow does. Yeah, Crow's definitely throwing off some really awesome uh, combo moves. Dude, yeah. dude definitely looks like he, he his fighting style looks like somebody who's been doing this for a long time. Well, because he has. I know he has, but that's I, the fact that they're able to display it through animation. That, like, yeah, all of the other characters obviously know how to fight. But you can tell just oh, by looking at it that... Good. Yeah, it just looks like Crow... You can see the experience in the animation is basically what I'm getting at. And that's yeah. not hard. So, that's not easy to do. Yeah, point is, good on you, Kruby. Yeah. Also... With a C. Yes. Also, important uh, to point out, Oscar Scrooge McDuck's a grim to death. <laughs> I didn't even think about that when I was watching it. He, he jumps up, does a flip, jabs him, jabs him in the back with the boing, and, and uses that as a recoil to continue his jump, and that kills okay. the Grim, and that is hilarious. Okay, Ruby community, I need you on this. I want to see fan art of Oscar going into a vault filled with Lien, <laughs> and then diving and swimming through it. He is the Scrooge McDuck of the Ruby universe, just you wait. Apparently. I mean, it, it makes sense. Scrooge McDuck did start off as a poor farm boy. Oh my god. I'm just saying. <gasps> Oscar's gonna become the richest man on Remnant. I mean, possibly. He's got he's got Ozpin living inside his brain and stuff, so he's he's got the means. It's possible. He could make it happen. And then he'll kill a knight with a shovel. I mean it happens. <laughs> Random reference. Random reference uh, that maybe not everyone will even understand, but you know what doesn't matter. Weiss does a cool thing and throws a bunch of nerds up into the sky. Ren does a bunch of, you know, Ome Wan Shindairu stuff, and then the Grim all explode dead, and it's great. Yeah, that was really cool. And, uh, we kind of, like, skipped over this, but when uh, Blake draws her sword, she kind of, like, it's like oh, realizes, oh, oh yeah. yeah, it's still broken. Oh, uh, yeah, I broke that last season. Maybe people should yeah. watch to figure out how that happened, if there were some reason watching only episode one of volume seven. <laughs> That'd be random. Random and stupid. So anyway, yeah. Blake's about to die. Well, but then she doesn't, because this is where the this is where the clip. Well, is. she also saves Yang. Yeah, she does save Yang. But that hap a bunch of saves happen like that over the course of the thing. Like people are about to get hit, but then someone else hits it away. Also, I feel like you know, like turned around in time, had her gun ready, like she would have been fine. Yeah, probably, but she wasn't. Anyway, the point is she would have died. Okay, so here's the thing. Giant green death lasers are falling out of the sky. And at this point, if the Ooh, foreshadowing if the if the foreshadowing was just not enough for you at this point, 
<laughs> at this point, seriously, at this exact moment, I'm sorry if you don't know what's going on. You stupid. <laughs> you just stupid. Pretty anyway, much. Anyway, uh, it's freaking Penny. Penny is back. And can we just briefly talk about the fact that there are people who were surprised by this? Like, everybody and their grandma should have assumed Penny was going to come back at some point, right? Yeah, in I saw like, so much speculation that we it, were going to see Penny again. In some, capac uh, in, in some capacity. We didn't know when or where or how. We just, like, she's a freaking robot. <laughs> like, yeah, she got cut in half and or, triplets and everything, and that's horrifying and everything, but, like, she the is a time. robot. Yeah. <laughs> Like, worst case, worst, worst, worst case scenario. She would have had to have been rebuilt from scratch and have no memory of Ruby or anything. Which, which I they did. I thought they were going to do. I'll admit, I thought that that's the angle they were going to go for and it was going to be sad, I, but they didn't. I thought that was the case as well, but, but they didn't. I'm happy that they didn't. No. Penny uh, is here. The dad says, hey, maybe you should say howdy howdy to your friends. And, and then she realizes... She realizes uh, Ruby's... Talking about. Yep, and um, Penny's happy face is one of the greatest things. And then she does... Alongside. And then she does a rocket-powered salutations glomp. Yep. <laughs> I love the slow build-up and Ruby being like, wait, what? Uh-oh. Uh wait. The, the, the best part about it is that Penny, the way she says it, the way she goes about it, is that she's definitely aware that what she's doing is incredibly overblown and silly. <laughs> But she's doing it anyway. Also, shout out to yeah. Ruby to just kind of shrugging that off. I don't know how much Penny weighs, but I guarantee that that could not have been a weak blow. We know she weighs more than your average person, just by virtue of being made of metal. Anyway, we didn't even yeah. talk about it. Penny has a new design, and she's beautiful. Yeah. She actually looks like she's aged. And not just because of the longer hair. But yeah. the less talked about that, the better. Because that has a lot of weird implications. But anyway, Penny's back, and she is adorable, and I am happy. And so is and so is everybody. Everybody's happy. But then Geppetto... they should be. Yeah, then Geppetto, Pietro, shows up, and he's all like... He's like, well, yeah, she kind of did die. But then, wouldn't you know it, turns out, she's a freaking robot. So all we had to do was get her brain score... Her brain core thingy, and I made her a new body. Ta-da! Bada bing, bada boom. Penny's back. Penny is back, and the bow she has on the back of her head uh, is, is, metal. It, is made of metal and is used for emoting, <laughs> which is amazing. A lot of the design choices about Penny make absolutely no sense when you come to when you realize that you know she's meant for fighting to an extent. I mean, she was—I'm sure she was commissioned as a means of just purely a combat robot. But then yeah. you know, well, but that they... Pietro wanted a daughter, so he made one. But still. Plus, plus, in terms of a combat robot, who would expect like, a young girl? That's true. Who seems like really sweet and happy. And kind of a ditz. Yeah. For, like, for, one for, would suspect that. It's true. For <laughs> for a girl um, with metal inside her head, she sure also finds a way to store a lot of air in there. Hmm. Anyway, she cocks herself on the head and there's a metal thunk thunk and that is hilarious to me. I still love the whole, like, uh, Ruby, we have so much to catch up on! As the alarm is going off, she still has this massive smile. We will continue this discussion later. No, it's even better than, <laughs> it's even better than that. It's like, I can't wait! Sirens go off. It appears we'll have to wait. <laughs> but also, shout out to the rest of Team Ruby, uh, saying that this, that this entire experience is strangely wholesome, and that that sums up why, that, that sums out Penny incredibly well. Very, very well, yeah. She has the most strangely wholesome thing in the world. And then she flies away yeah. and speaking a million words a second. And it is hilarious and cute. And I'm, it is. I, and I'm, glad, that, I'm glad that Penny is back. I am too. I, and if anyone out there is really, really mad about the fact that she still has memories and thinking that should have been um, like a really scary moment for Ruby or something. Mm -hmm. Hey, you ever think maybe these characters have been through enough? Yeah. Besides, and we're about to go through some more stuff anyway. Yeah, why I mean, can't they be happy? Why, why can't we have like a happy thing for just one? Like, I, I, yeah. there, there's so many layers to this. One, if you thought Penny was gone for good, that's on you, because obviously she was coming back in some capacity eventually. Yeah. 
Ruby still had to go through several, at, at the very least, I think at this point, maybe about a year of thinking her friend has been dead. Yeah, I think... I still remember last year, Lindsay confirming that Ruby is 17 at that point. Yeah. So, at the very least, she, she spent a long period of time thinking one of her closest friends died. So, you know yeah. what? The emotional damage and the character development that came from it has already set in. It's not undone because Penny came back. I mean, also, you know, Pyrrha is still dead, so that ain't going to be reversed anytime soon. Unfortunately, because I liked Pyrrha. We all did. I still think she'll probably come back as, like, some sort of weird aura ghost for, temporarily for the sake of closure, but she'll definitely stay dead. Hmm. It's either that or Salem is like, hmm, how can I mess with these three in particular? I know. I'll <laughs> resurrect a close friend of theirs, but as a grimified version that will try to kill them. That's very dark and screwed up, and it's probably going to happen, and I'm not looking forward to it, so let's not think about it right now. Yeah, let's not, but Nora has, like, um... A bajillion I I questions. Exactly yeah. So like, a bajillion questions. It's like, well, that's convenient, because I've got, like, a thousand answers. <laughs> and then Maria's like, I have no idea who that kid is, but she must be important, right? I'm yeah. just like... <laughs> that is Maria, important. is it not obvious? <laughs> Anyway, so Ren notices that something bad's about to happen. He's not able to react, but then everyone gets boloed. Uh, except for Crow, and he's like, where's that coming from? And then he gets boloed himself. Yeah, I don't know why they decided to wait. And then there's these... Uh, Crow, you had one job! You had one job, job, Crow. Oh, by the way, his voice actor sounds nearly identical to the way that he used to, and I don't understand why people are complaining. And if you are complaining, shut up. What, what he said, basically. Here's, here's the fun. Here, here's the here's the bare bone facts that it's never going to be reversed. Okay, this is the way things are now. It's never going to change back. You're going to have to deal with it, and continue. And the longer you go complaining about it, the dumber you look. Yeah, like whether it be just in the comments of videos or just replies to companies that have absolutely nothing to do with it anyway. Yeah, that's just that's just the facts. Anyway, so the Asshole Brigade shows up. Mm. They, they are these, uh, I guess their names are the Aesops, which is weird. I just I just realized that the lead guy that was in front of Crow was spinning a shoehorn. Yeah, uh, it's a horseshoe. That's for, random. It's a horseshoe. Uh, horseshoe, sorry. Yeah, a shoehorn is something you use to what wear. Oh, actually, hold up. Looking at him, he also has a, um, well, I'd say a rabbit's foot, but it's clearly like a Grimm's foot or something. And those are both symbols of good luck. And he's talking to Crow, who's all about bad oh. luck. So we've got a parallel going here. Oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't notice either of those things the first time, but now I'm noticing both of them. This dude's, this dude's decked out in good luck charms. Hmm. His symbol is a four-leaf clover. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I didn't notice any of this. Yeah, his his logo. It's like a horseshoe yeah, surrounding a four-leaf clover. I see it. There's the little grim fruit he has on his waist. So, dude's just decked head to toe and in good luck charms. Oh Holy my. crap. <laughs> that is the most obvious thing that I didn't notice at first. Wow. That is weird, but kind of cool. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Credit credit where credit is due. Yep, and now everyone's weapons are getting taken away, and because I'd like to point out, uh, one of the, at least one of the Aesop's members is a Faunus. It's true, and one of them's got big ol' hips. Well, so one of them is barefoot. And dem, and dem hips. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> also, one of them looks like a mummy. Like a, yeah. Like a shriveled up weirdo. Hmm. Wait, is the Faunus one the one with the hips? I can't tell if that's weird hair or some kind of horn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a hard time telling. Anyway, so everybody gets arrested. The end. Yeah. Good volume. Short, but good. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't expect Ruby to end like Seinfeld with everybody in prison with absolutely no real resolution to any of the conflicts or oh, okay. running see, story I arcs. See person, I see the person you're on about with them hips. They got them hips! Yeah. They are not the barefoot person. Well, They're... it's not barefoot, but like open-toed. Open-toed. So. All right, so before we get to... So we got good yeah. luck, guy with tail... Them hips, yeah. open toe, and, and the guy with 
he, he just looks weird. Either either that man is incredibly old or just incredibly dehydrated. I'm sure we'll get some sort of interesting answer eventually. Now, before we get to the intro, and trust me, there's a lot to talk about with the intro, so I want to make sure we get everything out of the way first. Anything you wanted to say before we, like, talk about the really cool intro and all the speculation we can get from it? I kind of want to point out just another, like, behind the scenes. Well, not behind the scenes, but, like, tiny detail that you would likely miss. Hmm. It's like when they're in the back of that truck being arrested, you can see Yang's, like, like, bobbing up and down. Yeah, she's not feeling so good. Yeah. So, Jesus Christ, like... The detail the crew be going to with these. Uncle Crow, I ain't feeling so good. Oh, don't. Now she has the powder. But yeah, she's got bouncy leg. Which, um, while not a guaranteed thing that means, uh, you know, anxiety or anything and stuff like that, it's a very, very common affliction for those who suffer from anxiety. And I also do it, by the way. Yeah, I do too, and I also... Some sometimes... I'm Sometimes I'm not even realizing. I'm yeah, just it, like, it's like it's it's like it's a it's a subconscious tick. Yeah, and it doesn't always mean anxiety and and freaking out, but it can. And given the circumstances, it more than most likely is exactly what it actually is for uh, Yang, because she, her head's also sunk in the lowest, mm -hmm. so she's clearly having a problem. So that's gonna be fun. I'm concerned for her. Yeah, she's got brain problems. Anyway, so now we've got a new intro, and I'm just going to be completely 100% yep. up front with you. Out of every single intro we've had, this is my favorite one. It is a really good intro. It is so good. I've been seeing people say this is like the most anime intro Ruby has had. Oh no, it definitely is, especially with my favorite part, where they, um, they're um they all basically jumping up to Atlas, and they cycle through all of their outfits they've had up to this point. I know, right? I was like, it took me a bit, because I didn't even realize that that's what was happening, because, um, it, it, with a couple characters, it's slightly harder to tell, but, um, yeah, with, especially, I, like, Yang. Yang goes by really fast, so it's hard to tell that her outfit is changing, but then, then you realize that it is, and it's amazing. Yeah. I'm trying to go, like, as slow I know, as it, I goes, it, it all goes by oh! so fast. Oh, that's so cool! You know that thing, the... Uh, Blake does for a shadow clone. Yeah, she shadow clones yeah. into her new outfit. Yeah, I love that. I know it's 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 so cool. They're like using the natural that, effects that the characters ha use in their combat all the time to transition and through. New hair. It's so great. I love it. And the new and her sword is fixed. It is. We'll get to that. And Weiss is looking fabulous. Oh yeah, and Warrior it. Princess Weiss is on the way. I know. And then Ruby flies through, her outfit changing the least, but still, it, it's really more in the hair than anything. Yeah, mostly. And but I like how they do it with a semblance. Yeah, I do too. And then we've got Ironwood, and he's looking at some stuff, being all paranoid and weird. Yeah, as he does. And then uh, we've got the... Uh, and then we've got the, we've got, we've got the butthole patrol. And look... Butthole patrol! <laughs> that's what they are. And look at the... No, look, look, look. Look, look, look what he does. He's clutching. He, he clutches yeah. their symbol. Boom. It's the four-leaf clover thing again. I saw that. <laughs> Looking like they're coming that, out of the damn Venture Brothers. Get out of here with this banana nonsense. That's what I'm calling them from now on. Well, they are. That's what they are. They're the butthole patrol. <laughs> okay. I promise, in my reaction to the second chapter, I will acknowledge them as the butthole patrol. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we actually have a good shot of these five. Okay, so, yeah, there's, um, there's at least one Faunus. I'm not sure about the, uh, I'm not sure about Dem Hips, maybe? But I think she just might have cool hair. I don't think, I don't think she is. I think it's just the hair that it kind of looks like it. Yeah, also they've got, like, a brawny gal, which, okay, that wins some points. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, and we got that guy that... I, I, he's, look, like, he's looking like a dog or wolf faunus, I guess. I mean the guy on, like, the far left. He has, like, dots, like, going down his face. Yeah, uh, that might be, uh, that... The gateways of Chakra, Nirvana, and all that stuff. Hmm. That's a very common thing. It's possible that might be something to be related with, but I'm, 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 I'm still focusing on, uh, on Dogtail here. Who wields yeah. what looks to be, like, some I... sort of tiny chainsaw sword? I feel like I want to say he's a wolf on us. I, I, well, yeah, I feel like you could just say dog, but I'm going to guess probably a wolf. Yeah. So, his, his tail wags. 
Oh yeah, it does. <laughs> That's silly. Also, we get a brief shot of Watts. Yeah. Which means well, one like of his mustache. Yeah, his mustache and silhouettes of um, crazy tail man. But Tyrion. um, yeah, Tyrion. Sorry. Uh, but the thing is, hang on. So, what do you think? Do you think that it's meant to be like this um this talented inside job guy? Do you think it's supposed to be Watts? I'm fairly certain it is. Because that seems a little disappointing, because, like, we know that, but I guess the characters... The characters, I don't even know if they they've even... Have they, have any of them even seen Watts before? Um, I don't no, think, they haven't. Yeah, that's what I thought. So I guess, technically, he could pretend to not be evil if they did run into him. Also, do you remember that W that was on uh, Cinder's scroll when she got the message about Penny? Yeah, 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 it was Watts. Yeah. I was really hoping it was going to be, um, uh, Whitley or something, but whatever, whatever. Well, you also desperately want ways to kill a family member. Yes, well, speaking of which, we get we actually get a, a scene dedicated to Schnee families, uh, to the Schnee family. We've got their, you know, evil dad, evil brother, and Weiss is actually yeah. with Winter, who's smiling, and it's- so Thankfully. It's, yeah, so, well, first of all, aww. Secondly, I think this implies that Winter, despite what, I don't know, the any negativity that we could possibly find about this whole thing, I think it implies that that means she's probably on Weiss's side, ultimately. Mm. Even if maybe she isn't right. technically, I feel like she'll probably do what is best for Weiss, ultimately. Yeah. Also, I thought about this um, like off camera, and we didn't exactly talk about it via voice chat, mm. but uh, this shot of... Uh, Winter and Weiss side by side. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're almost back to back as well. Almost. Um. Yeah. Last, and we know that the Winter Maiden is meant to be being introduced in this volume, right? I mean, it definitely should. Mm hmm. And so, and, uh, uh. Yeah. Last time a Maiden was introduced in a volume, or yeah. at least it was known that they were the Maiden. Yeah. Um. Then they also appear back to back with a member of Team Ruby in the intro. I don't know, did they? Yeah, Raven and Yang. They were back to back in the Volume Five intro. Oh no! And then, and then, boom! Raven was the Spring Maiden. You're right. But here's the thing: Would Rooster Teeth really do that a second time? I think so. Mm. You want to know why I think so? Because the why? Rooster, the, because the Rooster Teeth team. And the Kruby are scientifically designed, bred in a lab, to make Weiss suffer as much as humanly possible. And what better way to do that than to have literally the only member of her family that cares about her die? Uh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. What do you see? Here's the thing. That's the thing. You ask, would they be willing to do that exact same theming again in the theme song? I say, are they willing to do something that awful to Weiss? And the answer is, always, of course, they hate her for some reason. <laughs> I mean, let's just be completely real here. Although, ultimately, uh, the only good news to be had from that situation is that if Winter is indeed the Winter Maiden, which, I mean, she's definitely in the top three candidates at this point. Well, we only have, like, I, well, I only have two people that I really think is the Winter Maiden. It's yeah, Winter it's, it's either Winter or this new this new girl that we'll get to. Yeah. So it's either one of them. And if it is Winter, she is going to die. And it's definitely going to end up going to Weiss. Yeah. Like, I can see, I, like, I can even mentally, like, just, just, just picture it. It's like, if anybody has the mental conditioning needed to deliberately get their powers transferred over to a specific person instead of their assailant, it's probably Winter. Wouldn't surprise me. So, I'm just saying, maybe it's obvious, maybe it's so obvious they wouldn't do it, maybe it's so obvious they feel they have to do it. I'm just saying it's a possibility. Yeah. It's a possibility. Anyway, cool panning and, uh, shot of everybody being awesome, then Penny shows up and she is adorable. Yeah. And then we get uh, so no, we get a close view of Yang's semblance. Yeah, so I guess, I, I guess her semblance has like. Remember how they said that semblances evolve? Yeah. 
I know that she's always had a sort of fiery element to her semblance, but she just straight up threw a fireball out of her fist. Hmm. Do you think that might have anything to do with anything, or... Because, I mean... And I'm she, going she, she, by shot. Because when you look at it, she's normal, she bangs her hands together, semblance activated, hair legitimately on fire. Out of Although the... I noticed... It Boom. comes out of the robo-arm. It does come out of the robo-arm, but it definitely has to have something to do with the semblance. Come on, now. And Yeah, I, I feel... mean, why would she activate it and then do it? Just be if weird. absolutely nothing else, we do know semblances can evolve and become more powerful over time. Yeah. So, hey, if Yang's getting upgrades, if, I'm it, fine with that. No, also, if really, what else could you do with Yang's powers to upgrade them? Basically give her fire powers. Yeah, true. Give her some pyrokinesis, technically, basically. It was, or just have her, or have her absorb fire as well. That works, too. I really like Nora's new outfit. I do, too. It's a very it's good. Like, I know some people that don't, and to them I... And to them I, I say, sh 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 shut your big dumb face. Okay, now here's the thing. First and foremost, yes, Jean has a haircut. I actually like it, but that's not what's important right now. I have no issues with it. Yeah, exactly. The point is... Yes, the banana comparison, I thought that was funny. Yeah, that is funny, but admittedly. Anyway, the point of the matter is... Uh, John's shield is glowing blue. Yeah, it's he got some... He ha yeah, if you pause it just right, he has, hard, like, hard light dust embedded in his emblem on the shield. Which is cool, so even John's getting upgrades. Yeah, John's shield is getting is getting some kind of upgrade, because you it, the way I actually managed to get a really... Oh, dude! I actually managed to get an incredibly good shot out of it. It's actually, like, extending the size of the shield. Yeah, and I just thought about it. You know that option where he uh, turns the shield into, like, a massive broadsword? Oh, my God. He could do that with the hard light. He could, and then he would have, like, a super de duper big sword. Oh my god. Oh no, John. <laughs> you're, you're, it's been a slow burn, but this dude's getting really cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For someone who started off as like, easily the worst fighter out of all of the main characters, he's he's definitely know, making right? progress. It's like, John, I'm, I'm proud of you, buddy. Yeah. Okay, so here's, Look at you go. here's the thing about the butthole patrol. Despite being buttholes, and they definitely are on patrol... It seems like, ultimately, that it's been a misunderstanding, and I guess they're gonna be ally characters. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Even if it's, like, I don't know, an animosity-filled alliance, I feel like they're definitely on the side of good. Otherwise, I mean, I'm kind of I'm jumping ahead slightly, but they're posed I mean, together with all the other characters in the end, the end shot of the, of the intro. Yeah, but also their color scheme and like general style of outfit is similar to Iron Wood and Winters, so they're, they're definitely part of the Atlas military. Yeah, I imagine, and, and, like. uh, and Ironwood, while obviously full of paranoia and all manner of problems, um, I don't think he's evil by any stretch. No, Ironwood is not. I don't think he is. I don't think he's going to betray. I don't think we got another, um, you know, Lion Leo Man problem going on here. Um yeah. I feel like he is obviously a very flawed man, making bad choices, but I don't think he is deliberately trying to be evil. I think he's on the side of good. He's just not doing the right thing. Hmm. And now we've got this lady, who's probably yeah. who's either the Winter Maiden or just something else in general. Hmm. Now here's yeah. the thing. Oh, wait. Yes. Wait, who's that voice actor that is joining Ruby this season? Yeah, uh, a lot of them. Oh wait, um, Shantae's. Uh, yeah, sh I, oh damn. Uh, Christina V. Yeah. Uh, could this be the character that she's voicing? Yeah, it's completely feasible now that I think about it. Then again, there are two people in the Baho Patrol that uh, could also qualify that. That is true. There are there are two. There there's there's Brawny Gal and Dem Hips. Hmm. You know, if these characters ever actually get names, they're never going to actually be called that. <laughs> I'm just going. <laughs> I'm going to call them by their code. They're 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 given code names. <laughs> Can I say I blame you? Lucky, Wolf, Mummy, Brawn, and Dem Hips. <laughs> I think Dem Hips is my favorite. It's the best one. She is the best member of the Butthole Patrol. Anyway, so someone throws a rock at a hologram of Ironwood and it turns into Jacques. What's up with that? Yeah. Uh, so here's the thing I was thinking about. What is the symbolism? Uh, the Jacques is really the man behind literally 
everything. Well, considering how big the Schnee Dust Company is and how many tendrils they've got wrapped up inside everything, and considering how just, in general, terrible of a person Jacques is, I could see it. Mm. Even if it's not like... Even if he's not like the public leader of all that is... He's definitely the shadowy guy in the background who is. Yeah, so Ironwood is not evil. Jogs definitely is. Oh, definitely. I mean, we knew that from the start. He was always like, he was always a bad person. Like, as messed up as it would be, I have to agree with Max. If Weiss, like, Weiss, like, Weiss, like, yeet, like, yeet, <laughs> I'd be okay with it. Could you please repeat that? Because you just went through a weird robot a weird echo chamber. Robot echo chamber. <laughs> oh, God. It's just that with what I said, I thought you were like, repeat that, it felt so good to hear you say it. <laughs> uh, but no, if Weiss yeets her sword through his head, I'd be cool with it. It would be pretty dope. It would be pretty dope. Also, Seriously, are you, are, I thought you were... Are you wearing headphones? Like, are you wearing headphones sorry? or not? Because I'm hearing me whenever I talk. Whenever I talk. Oh, uh, here, I'll try to turn my volume down. Thank you. Okay, is that better? Yes, it is. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't trying to get you to repeat it. There was some sort of weird Google Hangouts glitch that made you talk very odd there. You'll, you'll hear it when you watch this. But, uh, yeah, I do want to see that yeet okay. get thrown the, the sword through the head. That's going to be great. Yeah. Yeet us! And, uh, and then we have uh, Ironwood and Oscar going at it. If I had to guess, probably Ironwood having problems with Ozpin. Oscar is, Actually, is very much getting used to this. Actually, now that I've uh, like paused it and gone out really slowly, mm -hmm. they're both smiling. They are, yes. Whoa, hang on. Is this like a... Tr well, they are smiling the entire time. There's no animosity. Yeah, so it's going to be like that they're, training. They're training. Something. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, I'm actually okay with that. Never mind. At first, I was disappointed that they were going to end up fighting, but if it's a good kind of fighting, then all's well. Yeah. I'm also, happy about that. Also, credit where credit is due. Blake's wicked, cool, whippity, flippity, dippity dip thing that she does is... Oh, uh, that's so damn cool. That is Wicked Butler, and I love it. Wait, also, how many of those things... How many of those things actually kill? I keep having to like, skip back precisely 15 seconds and then go back to it. I don't know, like four or five. But then Weiss starts surfing on her glyphs. Which is awesome. Which is really awesome. It, here's the thing. And it looks fun. It does. Here's the thing. Weiss may not be the strongest or even the fastest, but you know what she is? Definitely the most mobile. Okay, yeah, I just counted uh, White, uh, Blake kills five of them. That's what I thought. That's the thing about Weiss. She's definitely able to get to point A to point B the fastest and in, in, in three go. different dimensions. Whee! Whee! Stab the face. And then we've and then we've got El Scorpiano. And he's fighting Mystery Girl and Crow. And I guess hmm. Crow is also getting a new outfit. Yeah. See, this is also one of the things that lead me to believe, like, could she be the Winter Maiden? Because why else would Tyrion be after her? Mm-hmm. Then again, it could just be, like... I don't know, there's a lot of things that this could be. I really love Ruby's new anime hair. Yeah. But also, Crow vs. Tyrion rematch. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Also, look how happy Penny is in this shot. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> I think there's, there's so much going on in this shot of all of the characters that makes me laugh. Like, there's the <clears throat> fact that Clearly, there wasn't enough room for all of them. <laughs> and Crow's just, like, way off to the Crow's side. Crow's way off to the side. Oscar is just kind of casually strolling his way forward. <laughs> Mummy guy of Penny's the butt... flying. Penny's flying. Mummy guy of the butthole patrol is, like, stashed away in the corner over there. For some reason, I think there's some manner of perspective nonsense going on here, because Ironwood and Winter are, like, gigantic. That being said, I like the shot. This is the best intro. Yeah. Also, the I've seen people compare that shot to My Hero Academia a lot. Yeah. Also, and yeah. this is probably the most important part, Relic of yeah. Creation flashing behind Monty Ohm's name. Yeah, it's like... Oof. Right in the fields. My but feet. that symbolism is just beautiful. Yeah, that's, it's really great. And that is episode one of volume seven. 
Yeah. Very, good start. very, very good start. I have high hopes for this season, and so far they're they're being met. Yeah. I, I feel, and where do we go from here? I have no idea, but I, I one thing I want to point out: I fully expected Penny to come back, and if she was gonna come back, and she was, it was gonna be in this volume because we're in Atlas, and she, that's where she was built. But yeah. And of course, there was the official Ruby doing that whole like their combat ready and then changing it mm -hmm, mm -hmm, thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, on top of all of that, I was not expecting to see her in just flat out in the first episode. I guess because she was in the intro, she kind of had to be. Otherwise, spoiler. Yeah. But um, oh, I figured she would show up uh, maybe in the middle. Oh, speaking of, um, round when Volume Six was wrapping up, uh, Neef Ohm, uh, Ren's voice actor and Monty's brother, mm -hmm. was a waste talking about how something big is coming mm -hmm. and he was not talking about the leviathan uh he's talking about something else big it was penny coming back it's just a uh believe it or not this was meant to be the finale of volume six you know that makes way more sense yeah because also the, vo uh, the volume is Aaron, the, the, the volume ending sorry. the way it did in, in six with them in the ship and not landing uh, that doesn't really make nearly as much sense as, like, the volume ending with them being arrested. Mm. Like, that would have probably... Yeah, the... That would have made a lot more sense, like, when we, and we got Penny back as, like, the int as, like, the last thing. It, it makes a lot of sense, but it probably a, a time thing. I, th I think it was, but, uh... Yeah. That was a thing. And also, um... I think Aaron and Barbara were also talking about something they were really excited for for this episode. It was Penny coming back. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Everybody like, loves Penny. Everybody loves Penny. Yeah. She is a good. Yeah. So well, let's face it, all the main cast are. Well, they yeah. have their moments where it's like, no, oh, don't do that, but they're all good. They are all very, very good. Although some girls yeah. are best girls, and Weiss is that. I'm sorry, which one of us has a I'm... shrine? You. Exactly. Yeah. So so Actually, talking of stuff on that shrine, do you want to talk about uh, something on it? Oh, right. Well, in case no one else did, and maybe they only watch this podcast thingy. Um, this absolute mad lad of a friend I have. I don't... I, you, you might know him. Yeah, he's kind of in the call. Uh, yeah. Decided to... Right, unless there's a third person here I didn't know about. Not that I'm aware of. He basically decided to print out and bring a piece of artwork of Weiss I drew to her voice actress, had it signed, and then mailed it to me, and it is the greatest thing in the world. Uh, and for those who are wondering, hey, when did he decide to do this? Um, do you remember when uh, Volume 6 was wrapping up? Yeah, it was not long after that. Mm -hmm. He's apparently planned this for a long time. Yeah, because I saw Lindsay post, like, a con schedule that her and the rest of the voice actors had. And one date matched up with MCM London, which is the one I go to every year. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait, those four are coming to London again? And then the idea hit me, and I was like, I, I gotta do it. And then he did, and he is a very good friend. And now it is a very treasured part of my collection of Weiss memorabilia. There were a couple things I was really tempted to do in terms of posting it. Uh, uh, you mean mailing? I'm not trying to argue semantics. I'm not trying to argue semantics. I wanted to make sure that I knew what you were talking about. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. He was thinking about wrapping it in a freaking body pillow. <laughs> that was just one idea. I was talking to a friend of mine like at the con. It was like... If it wasn't so expensive, yeah, I feel like he would have. If, if like there's a there's probably a stand around here that sells them like should I just get one of a character he likes and just wrap it in it? Evil. And yeah, like the group I was with agreed. Okay, that would be hilarious. It would be hilarious, but expensive, it, and that's the problem. Yeah, it'd be a bit pricey for just like a cheap laugh. I mean, I'd keep it. Right. Well, it also depends on what who the character was. That's fair. I doubt they probably would have been. I, I, I that, that, that's, that's true. And I don't know. Maybe he'll do it in the future. Who knows? Either way, uh, I still. It's possible. Yeah, I, I still very much appreciate the the gift you gave me. Thank you. Hey, no problem. Hey. Oh, I kind of wanted to. Uh, you know, I'll ask about off camera. Never mind. 
No, well, they're off camera. All right then. <laughs> yeah. any, 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 anything else you want to bring up about this episode or thoughts going forward, or are we done here? I think we're just about done here. I can't really think of uh, much else. Yeah, not much really more to speculate about. We just kind of need more yeah. inform. We need oh, more information. Actually, mm. actually, you know. That opening gave us nothing on, like, certain characters that we know are going to play a part in this volume. Like who? Cinder and Neo. Who the hell are they? The two that are on their way to Atlas as well. Never heard of them. Okay. I don't know, maybe they get lost and don't show up in this volume. It's possible. I mean, it would be well, funny. Well, then again, uh, they're going to Solitos, I think it was, and our characters are in Mantle. Hmm. So, different parts of the world. Yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe they'll be maybe they'll show up, maybe they won't. Either way, it's all good. Yeah. They'll come back eventually. Yeah. They're just going to be forgotten about. They're, they're slightly too important at this point. Yeah. But all right then. That's the first episode of volume 7 of this podcast. So, it's going to be grand old time. We'll see you all uh, yeah. next week, I guess. Well, yeah. And uh if you remember that uh, whole thing where we talk about the preview for the next episode. Well, that depends on if Ruby Rewind comes back. Yeah, because at the moment we don't know if it is. Mm. Like, nothing's been said. I haven't seen it on the live schedule. Like, I've been checking it a lot. Yeah, so either it exists or it doesn't. Mm. Because Rooster Teeth never bothers to tell people if they cancel things. Yeah, it... Like... They'll either just not say it, or they'll move it to a different service. Exactly. I mean, is, is Ruby Chibi a Nomad of Nowhere gone forever? Probably. Maybe. Who knows? I don't. That, that kind of makes me sad. I know, bud. Anyway, see you next week, you fools. See ya! <laughs>